Hey guys, welcome back to part two of the 114th scale train, which is a four inch gauge uh, train set to match the Tamiya King Hauler Grand Hauler uh, RC semis. Um, again, I'm uh, one of those who are cuckoo for choo choos, and I wanted a train to haul behind my King Hauler. Well, I wanted a caboose to haul behind my King Hauler, but once you build a caboose, then you got to build a locomotive, then you got to build a all these other cars. So I'm going to show you the rest of my train set that will complete the, the four piece set and the kind of plans for the future. I just uh, unpacked the locomotive from our last show and it happened again during transports. My axles snapped. You know, these should be riding up here. So the axles are broke off. Um, that's the second time this has happened, which tells me a, I either need to make a stand this rides on because this, uh, 3D printed axle just isn't strong enough for when you got the weight bouncing around and I'm hauling this in a trailer. Now granted I've got it inside a Rubbermaid tote, inside foam, but when it bounces in the back of an enclosed trailer it just it does a number on it. So I think what I'm going to do is actually have aluminum axles turned and then I'll just 3D print my wheels, 3D print my truck. Everything else is alright, it's just that straight downward shear force on a axle that's printed vertically. You know those layers are now sitting uh, horizontal and they got a pretty easy shear for her. so not surprised not really uh, concerned about it it's happened before I'll just take these trucks apart and uh, and replace the axles so I did make these trucks so they disassemble you can see little bolts here connecting the rods and there's some over there there's uh, it's kind of bolted it together in a few places but in the last video you saw I had that mown on uh, wooden caboose. It's a 114 scale off of a 40 foot wooden caboose. This is to basically represent a F unit. Uh, the F units were made by EMD. Um, and this 81A actually I believe would have been like an F3. Um, this I believe is actually a nose cab for like an F7. Uh, you don't really notice a whole lot of difference between an F3 and an F7. Um, I can't tell you the difference. I'm sure there's plenty of guys in that train world that absolutely can and will and will school me a little bit. Um, I take pride in basically everything I've built. I try to build 100% scratch my own design. I can't take credit for this nose. So this nose is all 3D printed in one chunk. I 3D printed myself. I had some layer splits here and there. So I did some Bondo and sanding up. I'm not a body paint guy. You'll notice some, uh, the layer lines in the print here. Um, I may at some point in time either build, print a new nose and redo that or just go back and finish that and smooth that off more. I have been doing more and more body work. So that international cab, I had a buddy of mine print for me. Um, I tried to take my time and get all those layer lines out and get the body pretty smooth. I did on the top here, but as you can see, like through here, I didn't. So um, I will post, I will, uh, Put a few pictures and videos in here during the build process. And so these pictures and videos kind of show that process as it's coming and going. Uh, but this is not just a static display. This is RC. Um, I've got LED lights in the front that was taking some out of some flashlights. I got the number board lit up. So let's just go to the back side. In this rear door actually unbolts. There's just two screws holding it in, but I put a remote switch in there. I have a Hobbywing dual ESC. So there's each set of truck has a drive motor. And the drive motor has a, a 3D printed, I'm sorry, it has the normal uh, standard Timia, uh, like what, the 10 tooth sprocket or whatever it is, doesn't matter. But then I 3D printed a gear that will go on the axle. So um, each one is powered, not both wheels, but basically one is powered. You can kind of see there's the motor. Let me turn the light on so you can see a little better. But there's the motor on the back side, and there's the gear in there. And so that's a standard. To me, a uh, uh, motor I had plenty of because whenever I get one of the grand haulers or king haulers, I uh, swap them out. You know what? No, that is a uh, 
that's a high turn, like an 85 turn uh, RC four wheel drive 540 motor. I did have to buy a couple of these. But these trucks I completely designed myself, 3D printed, and they again sit on a bolster just like a normal one would. You can hear my uh, fan going on the ESC. You can kind of hear it going in there as it's warming up and that fan going. Um, but when you turn the power on the back, it turns the lights on, it lights up the number boards. Um, and I haven't done it yet, but I've got some computer speakers and I want a couple speakers in there and I'm putting a sound card in there because I got to have the train horn, you know, have that diesel engine rumbling sound. I'm not big on lights and lights and sounds on my semis, but a train has to have a horn. I you just got to. So, but overall, I am just so thrilled on how well this uh, F unit turned out. Um, and again, it's RC. So now uh, granted the back is <laughs> the back's going to struggle because it's uh, um, not a. Uh, you know, those axles are broken, but as I were trying to run this, actually, it, it's not communicating. I might need to bind this receiver. I changed out, um, I changed out, uh, radios at that show and it doesn't look like this is binding. So I must have bound this with another, uh, receiver. So I'm not gonna worry about that. It, it does move. Um, at an upcoming show, I'll have these axles fixed and we're going to have this running around. And that's why you saw me making the, uh, crossing gate was for uh, this train. So this is scale length. These F units are 50 foot long. So 50 foot divided by 14 just brings us out just about four feet long. So this is bait right under uh, 48 inches long. And all these little accent pieces are 3D printed like the horns, uh, the cowls for the fans, and all these like little rivet plates, the doors. I 3D printed all these, and as you saw in those pictures, how the structure is built. This is just like aluminum flashing. I bent and curved around, and then these are some 3D parts that would kind of cover up the fuel tanks and the diesel tanks underneath here. Looks like I got some uh, my rivet strips pulling off. Maybe I need to actually go rivet those on. Um, this from here back is kind of all intact, but you'll notice there's a screw here and a couple screws here, I can take this off and this hide will hinge up. So I need to access the uh, electronics up front. You know, my arm's not long enough to reach in there. So I can take this section out. The framework stays in there, but this section can come out so I can work on that. So then I had a caboose and a locomotive um, and I needed some more cars. So I'll, uh, just down the road from us um, is the Monon Connection and uh, well, it's the Wilson Stop Restaurant and the Monon Connection Railroad Museum, uh, owned by Dale Ward. Dale's a friend of ours, and in the early days of my dad moving train cars, we acquired a all-aluminum uh, hopper bottom from Alcoa, and we sold it to Dale Ward, and we moved that up to uh, his um, stone quarry up in Francisville, you know, just kind of right across the field from me. So let me push this out of the way. Like I said, it's struggling on the back end. But I wanted to build a aluminum, a hopper car mimicking that. And what's kind of cool about this is I use that same aluminum flashing and that's basically aluminum. So again, 3D printed the same trucks. I made a kind of redesigned a subframe for this, well, I didn't initially redesign. I initially printed the same from subframe and trucks that the caboose had, but when I did it, these trucks were uh, offset internally too close together and it was interfering with these hopper doors. So I had to design and extend, I moved the location of the trucks farther towards the end or closer towards the end. And so uh, because of that, I had an extra frame. So if I've got an extra frame, I might as well build a flat car. So I use those extra parts building a flat car. The flat parts car is not legit because again, the trucks need to be closer to the end. So I'm probably going to redo the flat car. Um, but I thought if I'm making this hopper car and you can see, I basically 3d printed these vertical strips to add a stiffeners and, you know, 3d printed the little rivets on there. So it looks like this whole thing's riveted together, but I made this a legit hopper. So I used, that aluminum flashing to make all the channels in there, just how it is in the regular hopper car. Um, and then I actually was pretty proud of myself. All of these doors open and close and they're all on a rack and pinion. And so two servos sit at that end, two servos sit at that end. 
and they can be remotely opened and closed individually. Now, you know, my, my YouTube title is Je Joe of All Trades, so I tinker around in a lot of different things. And as you saw in the railroad gate crossing, um, I tinker around it in Arduino. And Arduino is a kind of open source um, microcontroller that you can program yourself. And there's a website called MIT App Inventor. And it's a very simple to use uh, website to build your own apps for Android devices. Uh, this is a group of MIT students who did this while they're in college. And since they left MIT, they actually started a company called Thunkable. And Thunkable is a basically a website you can go to to build your own Android and iPhone apps. And so through uh, the joys of YouTube University, I programmed a app to basically be a Bluetooth remote control for my phone to open and close those doors. Um, I didn't really want to use a radio because I want the function of open, close for four channels and all of your radios self-center or even if they don't self-center, um, you know, this is a single action from one end to the other end. It doesn't have a neutral. Neutral would be half open. And so, you know, I more or less need an open close switch and I didn't find really a good, easy to use radio to do that. I know they're out there and actually I'm sure you guys are going to post in the comments, hey, use this one or look at that one because actually probably would be easier lot just having a radio. But I had an Arduino sitting around. I have a Bluetooth board and I had done some programming with apps in the past. So I s customized an app for the hopper doors so I could run four different channels. And then with my Bluetooth on the Arduino, I have an app on my phone and I can open and close each one. Now you'll notice the servos are currently out. Um, my original battery pack was a nine volt battery pack. Um, when I was doing all of my testing with this, I had my Arduino plugged into my computer through a USB cable, which gives it five volts. So all of those servos just work great on that five volts. Those, those little uh, micro uh, servos that I use in the crossing gate and a bunch of different projects. Um, but when I got the, the app done, it's working, the Arduino's working, everything's going the way I like it. I installed everything in here and I got about each servo and open and close once because I used a nine volt battery pack and those are only rated for like six or seven volts. So I fried them all. So I took them out. I haven't, um, I just got to get a little, uh, uh, like a little 2S LiPo that'll fit in there. So I've actually already 3D printed a battery box that'll mount up underneath there and I've already got more servos in, but I got to put that back together. Um, but I'm actually going to insert a video here. And there you can see the uh, the door control. So I'm really happy with the way that turned out. Uh, it was a fun project to do. Uh, again, I'm not necessarily going to do a build video on these, but as, as I build more cars, I probably will make videos about it. Let's get this train back out of the way. Oh, that truck is in bad shape. But then here's the flat car. So with parts basically left over, might as well have a flat car. You notice these trucks... The center here of this bolster really needs to be about right here. So, uh, like I said, I had that frame left over from when I was going to use it for the hopper car that it didn't work. And so I just 3D printed some sides on this and stuck it to that frame to kind of have a flat car. I heard it, most of the parts made up and then just ripped some wood. I'm going to take this wood out so you can see what this internal frame looks like. So you can kind of see the parts. Looks like I got some glue that came over on that. So you can see this, these I-beams I printed in like six inch sections, and it's got these webs in here that go in there. Um, and so, you know, and then the trucks fit up inside there. And actually, let me go and just flip one of these over so you can kind of see what it looks like. And this is basically what a real frame of a railroad car looks like. Me lifting up and flipping, over, flipping it over, that's how they're attached. Again, like I said, God and gravity are the only things that hold these on. There's this... Uh, 
Uh, this is the bolster. This sits inside the bowl on the truck. And then there's usually some, um, like some flat parts or webs here that ride on these little rollers on the truck. So as this starts to spin going around turns, you know, these just roll back and forth, keeping this thing balanced. Uh, sometimes you'll see like splacer blocks in here. There's a number of different styles of how this, but the general concept all the same. You got a bowl with a pen and then it's sitting into here. The only exception to that rule is passenger cars. Passenger cars have a, uh, a locking pin that actually comes in usually from the top. So as the uh, passenger car is sitting on here. So as the passenger car is sitting on top, usually from the inside you access a hole to access a locking pin. Every now and again you'll see you have to access the locking pin from below. And so that's how you would get those cars off. But um, this is kind of, yeah, part two of my 114th scale train video. I uh, hope you guys enjoy this and hope um, I'm hoping to get this train out and about more once I get it more complete. I got to get better axles for the locomotive. These things are not a problem for transport. I don't see myself replacing these plastic axles in here. I've never had one of them break on these cars. That one's just a lot heavier and it takes a lot of weight. So when you get some bouncing, it shears those. So I'm going to have one of my buddies turn out some axles out of aluminum. Then I won't have any problems with them and all my 3D printed parts. But again, I'm hoping to take this to more shows here up in the future. So hope you guys can see it in person. So have a good evening.